How to Create an iPhoto Slideshow. There are a couple of ways you can get started in making an iPhoto Slideshow. First of all, if you have your pictures in an album already, you can simply click on one of the albums that you already have created, and then from there you can use the bottom right hand corner where it says Create, and you can create a slideshow from there. Or you can also do this by going up to File and New Slideshow. Now, if you didn't have any pictures in an album yet, you could still do File and New Slideshow. It's going to give you a little warning about there are no pictures in this yet, and it'll tell you how to proceed. So you just would hit Continue. And then how do you get pictures into a slideshow if they weren't already in an album? Well, once you create your new slideshow, it shows up on the left-hand side underneath your slideshows that you have. And as you get pictures into your iPhoto, you can simply drag a picture right over onto this slideshow, and it adds it up to the pictures here at the top. Generally, when I've done this, it's added it to the end. So if you want to rearrange your pictures, you simply grab a picture and drag it to a different spot, and then your pictures are rearranged. So very easy to get started. Again, you can either use the Create button on the bottom corner, or you can go to File and New Slideshow. Now, Once you're in your slideshow, again, your pictures are across the top, and the few basic commands that you have are across the bottom. So we're going to take a little bit of a look at this lower right hand corner to begin with. One of the items that you'll find in the lower right hand corner is themes. Themes will allow you to pick some kind of a way that the slideshow progresses. And so you can see there are several different choices on here and you can choose one, see what it looks like, and then go back. If you don't like it, just simply go back and change it to something else. It does do the whole slideshow in the same theme, so you can't kind of switch over right in the middle. Now, depending upon what kind of theme you chose, if you decided to add text to something on your slideshow, that may look different depending upon your theme. So for example, next to the theme button in the lower right hand corner, you have text slide. So if I click on the text slide, you'll see that up on the top there's a text up here that shows to show me that there's a text slide, but because of this theme that I chose, which I believe is a snapshot, this is where the text shows up on the screen. So it isn't a, a whole slide, sp specifically just text, it's incorporated into whatever kind of theme you have. So I could simply put my text here and it would show up in my slideshow. Now if later on I decided, oh, I don't really want that text there, I, w I wish I wouldn't have done that, I can select the text up here on the top, meaning it's got yellow around it, so then you know it's selected, and then simply hit my delete key and that will go away. The same thing for any picture. If I decide I no longer want a specific picture in my slideshow, I can select it and then I can hit my delete key and that picture will go away as well. If I have a specific picture that I want to make changes to, I can double click on that picture and then I can make a variety of different changes to that specific picture. So for example, um, on the right hand corner now that I've selected this one image, I see quick fixes, effects, and adjust. And under quick fixes I can rotate a picture, I can enhance it, which means that it's going to, the computer is going to look at the picture and change the colors. Um, I can do a red eye fix if I want. If it's crooked I can straighten it. I can do a little bit of cropping or um, retouching a little bit on here too. And if I go to effects, that's how I can change the coloring of a picture if I want to in this area or add a special effect on here, um, making it black and white, sepia, those kinds of things. And if you want to really want to get into some uh, changes, you can go to adjust and you can play with some of these 
on your own here. Now at any point if you made changes because you're playing around with a picture and you want to get back to the original you can click revert to original. If you just did one little change and you didn't like it you could hit the undo button. So once the picture is changed the way you want it to be you can get back to your slideshow in the upper left hand corner it shows you the name of the slideshow so I can click on that and it's going to go back to my slideshow that I have. Now something else you'll want to add to your slideshow to make it more fun is the music. Again, that's in the lower right hand corner. If I click on music, it's going to take me immediately to my iTunes account. And so if I have songs in my iTunes account, I can pick something from there and it will um, I'll add it to this particular slide. Now if you hold this down, there are other places that you can select music from too as well. For example, maybe you've created some copyright free music in GarageBand, so you could choose something from there. And there's also um, theme music that goes along with the theme of the um, slideshow that you chose, and you can select something from there as well. Again, this will you will hear this when you play your slideshow. Finally in the lower right hand corner is the settings button and if I select the settings button a couple things that I do for um, all my slides I can change the timing of the slides so um, this one came up at 6.5 but if I wanted them to move along a little bit faster I could change this to a specific time and this will change the time of every slide that's out there. I can also do fit slideshow to music so this means that um, if you had a two and a half minute song, this is going to time the slide so all of them play in the two and a half minutes. If I don't want a title to show up, I can take the check mark out here. And if you want the slideshow to repeat itself, you can add a check mark here. This would be great for an open house or something like that where you wanted this to keep playing over and over again. I can also make adjustments to one particular slide. If I wanted it to be black and white, sepia, or antique, I could do that for one particular slide as well. So this is the settings in the lower right hand corner. Now again, you can um, play your slideshow at any point by hitting the play button down here, um, or you can preview the slideshow as well. If I hit the preview button again, it's going to um, stop that. Now, because I have headphones on, you didn't hear my music playing for part of that. Now, when you're done, you're satisfied with the way this is looking. If you want to put this into something else, so you're not going to play it in iPhoto, then you can export the slideshow to a movie. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this too. Um, for example, if you could export it here um, as a display, for example, and because it's so large here, that would be a um, higher quality. Or some people do a custom export. And a custom export is going to make it into a QuickTime movie. Um, when you do this, make sure you pay attention. This is this is generally how I do it. Um, pay attention to where this is going, where the final movie is going. So this is saving in iPhoto slideshows. I generally, because it's going to be a movie, I generally put it in my movies file and I change that and then I click save and it will go through the process of exporting this into a movie. Then the next time you want to access this you would simply go into your finder and your movies and you would see this um, movie depending upon what you named it. And then this is something that um, can be burned onto a DVD which we'll talk about in another separate movie. So now hopefully you have the basics of how to create an iPhoto slideshow so that you can creatively share your pictures with others.